What's good everybody, it's Brohams, and today guys, I'm coming to you with a brand new deck profile. This is directly after my combo tutorial, so in case you guys wanted the deck profile, I have it right here. Before we get into that guys, please go ahead and check out all the socials down below. I'm about to go crazy on social media, so please go ahead and follow me, you don't want to miss out. And again, let's try and get 15 likes on this video guys, that would be absolutely insane. But, without further ado guys, let's get right into the video. Alright guys, so starting off with the deck profile, of course we play triple cashier Fenrir. Now Fenrir is very powerful in what he does. I already made a video on Fenrir, but again, I'll explain it again. If you control no monsters, you can spell summon this card. Now this is not a once per turn or a hard once per turn, if anything. So if you special summon cashier Fenrir, you attack our heretic seals of the heavenly spheres and they bounce Fenrir. You can go like main phase 2, re-special summon Fenrir, so that's really good. Another thing about him is that he has two effects and you can only use each of them once per turn. The main one that you're going to be using is during your main phase, you can add one cashier or monster from your deck to your hand. That's the main one because again, special, add an extender, add whatever you want. He's really good for that. But then the secondary effect is when this card declares an attack or if your opponent activates a monster effect. You can target one face up card your opponent controls, banish it face down. Now this is probably one of the better ways of how you're going to be banishing cards during your opponent's turn. Note that all of these Castera effects trigger on resolution of a chain. It's not in direct um, response to the activated effect. For example, if my opponent goes Drum Sun Soul Eating Overaptor activate effect, it won't be chain link one Overaptor, chain link two Fenrir. After the Overaptor resolves, Fenrir will trigger on a separate chain to banish the card. So that's just something to note guys, it's a very important ruling. Um, but yeah, so Fenrir is pretty good in a 3 of being able to get any monster and just being able to banish any card on the field um, face down, one face up card, which is really good. The second uh, monster we play is Triple Cashier Unicorn. Now, this is essentially the one card combo of the deck. Unicorn says, um, if you control no monsters, special summon this card. You only use each of the following effects once per turn. Again, the special summons are not hard once per turn, um, so you can special summon Cashier monsters as often as you want. Um, and then the other effect is this. Once per turn during main phase, you can add one cashier's spell from your deck to your hand. When this card declares an attack or if your opponent activates a monster effect, you can like, look at your opponent's extra deck and if you banish one monster from it face down. So, two differences between these. One is that Fenrir will add the monster, whereas Unicorn adds the spell. The second effect is that um, they both have the same instance where like when they declare an attack or a monster effect is activated, but Fenrir banishes one face up card on the field face down. Unicorn looks at the extra deck and banishes one monster from it face down. So some people like to go Unicorn first during their turn. So like if your opponent hand traps you, you can just Unicorn rip a card from the extra deck. And then some people like to go Fenrir when they go second or like during their opponent's turn, they'd rather summon Fenrir off Shangri-La instead because it's kind of more of a proactive thing versus a reactive thing. So again, they each have their own thing, but the main thing about Unicorn is that being able to add a spell where you guys will see in the deck file, a lot of the cast tier spells are very powerful um, spells in and of itself as well. But again, moving on to the next cards we play, we play triple cashier Rizer. Now Rizer is another really good card. This guy says if you control a cashier monster, special summon this card from your hand. Also, you cannot special summon monsters from the X deck for the rest of this turn except XYZ monster. So this is the first time you kind of hit a restriction. It's with Rizer. Again, um, if you control a cashier monster, special summon this guy no matter what. And then you can all special summon monsters for the X deck for the rest of this turn. Now he doesn't have similar restrictions like Fenrir um, and Unicorn it says if you control no monsters. So Rizer is pretty good um, in what he provides because like he's just like kind of a nice card. Um, and he's a level four as well, a warrior. So there's like nice interactions. If you want to play Roto, you can. His other effect is very important. And this is like, again, if you guys saw the comment video, you guys know how you're triggering it. During your main phase, if this card is normal or special summon this turn, you can banish one Castera card from your deck, except itself, of course, and then banish the top three cards of your opponent's deck face down. And if you do, this card's level becomes seven. And then you can only use each effect of Castera Riser once per turn. I'm pretty sure he's the only one that has like the hard once per turn um, special summon. But the main reason is, again, you can banish the top three cards of your opponent's deck face down. And then if you do, this card's level becomes seven. So when you go through all of these cards, all of them end up becoming level seven in their own way. So these two are level seven and Riser just becomes a level seven. And then this is, again, how you banish um, your big bang. You can also banish your spell cards to recur other banished cards as well. So Rizer is very, very good um, in that regard as well, being a pretty nice extender. Um, and again, all of these cards out of three of you want to open no matter what, of course, right? You want to open these cards in one way, shape, or form. So, so that's it for the uh, like main cast tiers that we play three of. Then just the one of we play the one Scareclaw cast tier. This card's pretty good, honestly. During main phase quick fact, you can special summon this card from your hand. And if you do banish one cast tier or Scareclaw card from your hand or grave it now, note that this is not a targeted special summon. You just special summon Scareclaw cast tier by banishing. 
um so it doesn't really matter if they like dd crow your target or whatever it says and if you do banish one catch your card so it's pretty good um and then the other effect is once per turn this card can attack while in face up defense position if it does apply to defense blah, blah blah that's like the whole scare claw aspect of it but you just play scare claw cast here because like i showed i think in my fifth combo it was that just having an extra extender just lets you push for so so much more so having it's pretty good and then we play the um one scare uh, tier elements cast here so just again a very small um of the extender during main phase so some of this card and if you do banish one cast your elements blah, blah blah whatever whatever if this are normal special summon, send the top three cards of either player's deck to the graver this year sent to the graver by card effect send the top two cards of your deck to the graver so chairman's cashier is good in this deck because once you establish a rise heart you can just summon her and then start milling cards and banishing cards so it's pretty good then when it's sent to the graver by card effect again mill two more but you're only playing one and one of each if not you could technically play more cash era, but just having the versatility is pretty nice um in that regard so again just having these guys just as extended is pretty good but you guys can note that scare claw and like i've said before decks that are multiple engines or smaller engines are always very op and this is only 11 cards you play you pay 3 6 9 10 11 of the cashier monsters which is insane then moving on guys you guys can see i am playing the barrier statue of the stormwind just because like this card just an fdk like being able to cheat this card out is so easily done like i was showing before in my other combos so like in that regard i feel like why would you not play barrier statue of stormwind but you guys know what i say about my deck profiles guys they are very standard very simple skeletons that you guys should take and then put your own spin on or you guys should just play it out of the box and then see what you want to change but again playing the one berry statue of the storm is just so op like you literally ftk and then when you do your play you end up ending with like a unicorn as well so like even if they try to attack Stormwinds, you have the Unicorn Banish, you have the Ariser Banish, so it's pretty good. But now moving on to the Hand Traps, we play Triple Ash Blossom and Joy of Spring. So Ash is good for a number of ways. One, being able to Normal Summon it to extend into a Baron combo is pretty good. But two, a lot of people are playing Book of Eclipse, and Ash essentially directly counters Book of Eclipse, because now you have kind of like a protection. Also works under the whole Macro Cosmos aspect as well. So Ash is very, very good um, in that. Again, depending on how the format shifts, you might swap this out for Cherries or something, because like you want to be able to like deal with like a Tier 0 format and that regard but again triple ash is pretty good just a versatile hand trap you want to play d shifter because it's an absolute ftk card if d shifter was a seven that would have been absolutely nutty but d shifter is a six but it doesn't matter because like, you can resolve this card and a lot of the times during your turn one combo you actually don't have any cards in your graveyard so you can like realistically hold d shifter then during your opponent's turn drop it um, so it's pretty good also another thing to note is that when you're playing against the guy you, you don't d shifter standby you wait to see what their play is so being able to d shifter right away is pretty good unless you know they're on tier then you d shift right away and then the card that i'm choosing to play and i don't know how good it is is ghost mourner and netflix and chill moonlit chill so basically ghost mourner specifically says um it also works on d shifter because it says you can discard this card instead of send this card from your hand to the graveyard but ghost mourner is good so i know that we don't have the ocg ruling where like it can be chain like one chain two our ghost mourner has to be chain like one because I think it's like a, a trigger effect or a fast effect. Don't quote me on it again. But I know that, for example, in the instance of a Shurag, if your opponent summons a Shurag, you have to be chain link one, they can be chain link two. So Mourner's not really good in that regard. But this is specifically for the mirror match or any other decks. Because basically, if you think about it, when your opponent special summons a Fenrir or a Unicorn, you can use Mourner to just do it on the special summon. And then not only are they restricted, they get burned when the monster leaves the field. So it's, it's a pretty good effect wheeler. Now, if you're asking me why I wouldn't play effect wheeler, why I'm playing Ghost Mourner instead, it's because a level three hand trap they can normal summon um onto the field and go into a baron play and like cards like ghost bell cards like um what's the other one like cherry stuff like that you can also play but i feel like ghost bell was like very mid um currently and cherry's like okay but it's a niche situation so i decided to play moonlit and chill um let me know what you guys think about this card because i feel like it might be good there's definitely some sort of sauce that you can do with it then we play the moonlit and chill and then that's it for the monsters guys 21 now moving on to the spell cards and like i said these cards are broken we play prime palette planet whoa prime planet Pair, yeah i'm not gonna pronounce that basically this card is like absolutely insane so one card combo um field spells are absolutely broken like in any deck that's like a meta deck so again this card basically says when this card is activated you can add one cashier monster from your deck to your hand monsters you control gain 100 attack and defense for each different attribute among the monsters on the field so again it counts both attributes as well so you can have like a monster gaining like 500 attack um depending on what it is and then it says if um for the rest blah blah whatever if cashier shangri -La, you control activates its, its effect Target one card on the field destroyed so this is another way of kind of dealing with other cards as well it's kind of similar to like how you would shuffle back um with like peril dynamo or whatever and then um uh, just pop a card so again having the pop is pretty good as well and then again you can only activate each effect and you can only activate one prime planet per turn but this card is crazy um it just sucks that it doesn't have like cash zero prime planet or whatever but there's of course there's a reason for that but you have to be a prime planet 
and you go ahead you get like a unicorn unicorn go ahead and get your thing thing goes and thing so having a one card combo in prime prime plan is crazy of course you can play the terraform because like this card needs to get banned it's absolutely cracked and then we play the double cashier birth so this card like i was saying before it's a very good card but like opening it puts you in weird instances so basically it says you can normal summon level seven monsters without tributing during your main phase you can special summon one of your non xyz cast tier monsters that's in your graveyard or banished then if your opponent activates a spell card or effect and you control cast your monster target three cards in your opponent's graveyard exactly three it can't be no less can't be no more banish them so again this card is good but the reason why i don't play it at three is because i'm kind of equating it to will of the salamangre in salamangre decks where like you didn't really want to play three will until later on into the format right now just kind of waiting having cashier birth um as like an extender play is pretty nice like being able to add it to your hand when you already have the other cards is really good as well but i feel like just drawing this card with multiples is like very bad because like you can only really just want to activate one um, it says you can only use each effect of cashier birth once per turn so having multiples of it on your field like don't really help at all so that's why i decided to play two because like it's kind of like you just want to be able to just search into it instead of just drawing into it and then moving on we played the triple cashier papayas so this is basically the itali all it is is target one cashier monster you control best from one cashier monster with a different attribute in from your deck invent mission and then the restriction applies where you cannot special monsters from the extract for the rest of this turn except xyz monsters so that's its first effect the itali target some monster from the uh deck with a different attribute and the second fact says if this card becomes banished target one of your banished cashier cards except papayas at your hand so this is what i was saying with um rise Heart like post turn one when you banished uh, big bang post pro, post turn one like turn two turn three you can banish papayas and then papayas can get you any banished cast your card and again with a riser you're going to be having all sorts of banished cast your cards so then this plus this becomes like a pretty nasty combo um in and of itself and then again you're just kind of looping the card the cards as well and then play triple pot of prosperity this is probably one of the best cards in the deck not only does it banish three or six you can choose what you banish meaning that when it comes to a riser and i'll explain a lot later you can basically equip any um Sorry, not equip. Attach any of your banished cards to it. So prosperity is very good. Then we're playing triple tactics talents. So this card is absolutely crazy. Um, this deck in in itself might be a little weird. It's more of a go second card. Um, but this card is absolutely crazy. Again, I'm post photon hypernova. If you guys don't want to play this card, you guys want to play like talents or like dark ruler no more. You absolutely can make it kind of like a budget version. But this card is crazy. This card says. If your opponent has activated a monster effect this turn, set one normal spell trap card directly from your deck, except tasking. It cannot be activated this turn. Or if your opponent controls a monster, you can add that card to your hand instead. And of course, you can activate that. So the main thing about talent, talent tasking, is like if your opponent is going to be using like Nibiru cards like that, being able to go talents tasking, get a card from your hand is pretty good. But if you think that like your opponent's not really going to be doing any of like summoning the monsters and they're just going to be doing hand traps you can play talents instead again it's in a weird format right now so i think that eventually it'll be good um you just got to wait and see and then we play triple infinite impermanence again this card works as another moonlit uh chill because you can just like imperm any of the cashier cards turn them off completely so it's pretty good um imperm you can activate directly in response to these effects whereas moonlit chill you have to activate like on the summon but that's what i was saying every single one of these cashier cards um in in they all have like a, a manual ignition effect like special summon response no okay cool i'm gonna use the effect but moonlit chill can basically just stick on the cards right away so they not only have to get rid of the monster um or like find a weird way to play around it but they do have to deal with um moonlit chill in the game their effects whereas effect builder is a little different but again um triple imperm and play the one cashier big bang now cashier big bang like i said before is very good if cashier xyz monsters on the field make both players banish it and then if, if this card becomes banished target one so this is the only brick of the deck i would say honestly and the reason why it's a brick is of course you want to be banishing this off of rise Heart turn one and i don't think he can do it you manage one yeah you can't do it from your hand so like of course drawing one of them is is a little sucky but being able to get this card back is pretty nice but again it's the one brick again we're rounding this deck off at a nice cool 40 you guys can change whatever you want but now moving on to the side deck which is like the exceptions that i think you can play and just additional kind of choices this is where i feel like cashier thrives so you can play cherries like i was saying before the only card i have here is kick callus but again you can just choose whatever card you want cherries is good as well being a level 3 tuner being able to normal summon for baron and then another thing you guys can play is triple ibli with almirage because going normal summon ibli linking away and going to almirage ibli goes to your opponent's side of the field and then it locks him out so in the mirror match it's very very powerful because again they can't special summon any of the, these guys here because it says if you control no monsters you can special summon so it's really good um and then this guy also says you cannot special summon monsters except link monsters so you can't like extend plays you can't use any of the monsters so they have to link off ibli first and depending on the deck they play they probably won't have an out to ibli um directly so they have to like crash it and then you can just like do all sorts of shenanigans prevent your opponent from playing the game another card i was testing was small world 
because there's instances where you can go like small world ash blossom rise heart and then get like one of the cashier cards or like small world a hand trap um unicorn get another cashier card so it's pretty good in that regard so i was thinking about it because you like banish a card face down so like how bad could it really be um but yeah then again you can play book of lunar eclipse instead of eclipse because again eclipse loses to ash blossom which a lot of decks will be playing whereas book of lunar eclipse discard one card target two face up chain face down only issue with lunar eclipse is it has to target two face up monsters that's the only downside guys but again it doesn't really matter because it's still an insane card then you can play the brave engine or the adventure engine as well i have seen people play it a lot i wish that water enchanters was was a tuner but it, again that'd be way crazier but again griffin rider illegal knight they're all seven so there is like niche interactions with that and then this is what i was saying where you can play like garura entis you can play skull knight you can play wind pegasus at ignition skull knight's a little different but this is what i was saying with like arise heart and prosperity you can banish these cards then arise heart can attach any of them under him so if arise heart leaves the field for whatever reason um like say for example arise heart gets nib all the cards go at the same time so they go to the graveyard these will all trigger skull knight's a new one like i was saying before because if prosperity banishes skull knight and you get nibbed and you already have ways of playing the game um arise art can have that card attached to it then you can banish skull knight and then you can pop like the nib token and just keep extending so skull knight's pretty good but that's it for the exceptions guys again the engines will change depending on how you guys want to see them moving on to the extra guys we play double shangri la like i said before this card's crazy this is how we're zone locking we're playing the arise art now arise art is what i was explaining he says once per chain each time a card is banished attach one banished card um to this card as material so again it says one banish card doesn't say attach that banish card meaning that like any of these cards that are banished off of prosperity you can equip and then when you detach it'll be absolutely crazy um the one mind hacker this card's crazy the reason i play two again is you don't want to lose a mind hacker you play with one mind hacker you play the one um number 28 titanic moth now this card is absolutely crazy because this card says if you control no monsters no other monsters this card can attack directly so it's working as a zeus card very similar to borbo where you go special special make her attack when this card inflicts battle damage attach one inflict 500 for each card so the death squall effect and then um you just slap on a zeus you play double zeus um because like why not again zeus is an accessible card and then you don't want to lose to diablosis so you have like double zeus play the one arsenal falcon for the bear statue combo play the one draco sack because draco sack just like op in and of itself you play the one big guy because like why not floor metal for a time which is kind of stupid um and then the two link monsters are donner dagger and uh black luster soldier of chaos but i think you should probably play some sort of out to ibli um i don't know if there's an out to ibli like maybe link devotee or something like that i think that might be an out to ibli but again um donner dagger is just like a good generic monster and then black luster soldier of chaos because all these monsters are level 5 million and you can just link a nib token away into it as well then the one burn because like i said for with the hand traps you can go ahead to normal summit and just continue to play so that was it for the deck profile guys if you guys want to see live duels with cash Jiro versus any other meta decks please let me know down below guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video so guys that was the end of the video if you guys liked the video please go ahead and leave a like down below so i know you enjoyed it subscribe if you have not already because usually if you get to the end of the video and you're not subscribed you should probably leave a subscription just because you were really messing with my video again comment what you guys want to see next my name is Hamza, and like i always say keep on shining never on your dreams peace